scientists at the University of Ghana have obtained critical data about the genetic composition of COVID-19 strains in Ghana. The data was obtained from viral strains in 15 of the confirmed cases in the country and would help scientists gain a comprehensive understanding of the variations of the virus that are present in the country. A statement issued by the university's public affairs directorate noted the feat was attained by scientists at the Nguchi Memorial Institute for Medical Research and the West African Center for Cell Biology of Infectious Pathogens at the university. It said the success achieved was a significant milestone in Ghana's response to the pandemic as it would strengthen surveillance. According to the statement, scientists have successfully sequenced genomes of SARS of two, the virus responsible for the global COVID-19 pandemic. It explained that genome sequencing allows for the compilation of the most comprehensive information about an organism's genetic makeup. Using advanced next generation sequencing methods, scientists are able to track and compare viral mutations to understand the origins of imported strains and to discover if any novel strains are emerging locally. And I have with me via Skype, Professor Gordon Awandere. He is the director of the West African Center for Cell Biology of Infectious Pathogens and also a lecturer at the Department of Biochemistry, Cell and Molecular Biology at the University of Ghana. Prof, thank you so much for your time. First of all, congratulations on achieving this feat. What does this mean in curbing the COVID-19 pandemic? Thank you very much, and good evening to your listeners. Um, well, there are, there are two levels to this. Um, first is that we have demonstrated the capacity to do this, and that in itself is significant, that we have the ability to um, do this type of investigations um, to understand the virus more and track its behavior over time. And to be able to do this, within our, our own shores, uh, without having to send anything overseas for it to be done, uh, without having to send data to be analyzed, um, without seeking help in interpreting the data. Uh, so we did this from beginning to end um, locally by University of Ghana scientists. So that in itself is an important milestone. Um, secondly, the information that we get from these types of uh, uh, data um, would help us in many ways, but for the current situation, in two main ways. Uh, one is that we'll be able to track the evolution of the virus. As you know, the genetic information that any organism has determines the organism's structure and function. In other words, determines its form and behavior. So by being able to um, obtain this information about um, the viruses that we have in Ghana at the moment, we'll be able to monitor over time whether they are changing in their form and behavior by looking at the genetic information that we'll be able to, to track over time. Um, number two, because genetic information is unique to you know, particular organisms, even when they are closely related. That means that if there's an infection in an area and the person has not come into contact with any known confirmed case, uh, we can look in the database and compare the genetic information of that particular virus to those that we have in the database. And that could help us determine where the infection came from. Is this an infection from um, the UK strain that we have in the country? Is it the one from Dubai? Is it the one from India? Or is it one from Burkina Faso or some other place? So that kind of information helps in surveillance because when there's a local outbreak in an area, you can quickly determine where the source is coming from okay. by comparing the genetic information. So these are some of the general things you can learn uh, from using these uh, types of data. Well, from the data that you have so far, are the strains different from that of Wuhan? So, um, if you can show 
the image that I shared with you, I can use that to explain briefly. Um, for the most part, the strains resemble the reference strain from Wuhan. Um, the majority of them are more than 95% similar to the Wuhan strain. There are a few that are uh, in the lower 90s, and then there's one that's below 90%. But for the most part, they are very similar to the Wuhan strain. Mm. Um, now, it is too early to say that the virus does not change because we already see a few changes. Um, viruses can change based on challenges they encounter in the environment or in the immune system of humans that they, they, they infect. And when they encounter these challenges, they can change their form and function to be able to escape these type of challenges. So with time, we could see more significant changes in the virus. If, for example, there is a factor in Africa that is limiting the spread of the virus, for example, or its ability to multiply, the rate at which it multiplies. The virus will try to find a way around this. And that could be by changing some of the genetic information that it has, so as to change its form and behavior to avoid this type of uh, you know, challenge that is facing in its growth and multiplication or transmission. So we will be able to track uh, this type of changes with time. So this is, this, this is going to be an ongoing thing. Um, we don't do this sequencing and then, and then uh, celebrate and stop. Mm. We have to do this regularly, probably on a weekly basis. We have to sample mm -hmm. from the cases that we have and sequence them <clears throat> and compare to what we have and see if, there, if, there are, if there's any evolution going on mm. and what the impact is in terms of the, the transmissibility and the virulence. Yeah. Prof, before you go, what's next for you and your institute as well as Nuguchi after this breakthrough? Well, as I mentioned, um, the breakthrough just tells us that we now have the capacity to do this in-house. We have to keep doing this so that we can provide useful information in real time um, to policymakers to make the necessary decisions. In addition, we are expanding the investigations into various uh, you know, other uh, aspects of the, the disease. Um, looking at the immune responses, do we have any uh, unique immune responses in, in uh, Ghanaians or Africans that probably limits the, the severity of the symptoms uh, in, uh, you know, in the patients that um, have the virus? Um, we may also be looking at, um, uh, you know, the virus itself and looking at um, you know, some of the proteins that the virus makes and see if we can use some of these proteins, uh, you know, as biomarkers of uh, some of the, uh, you know, the clinical symptoms that we see, uh, as well as the, um, you know, the duration of infection yeah. and all those things. All right. Thank you so much for your time and congratulations once again. Professor Gordon Awandare is the director of the West African Center for Cell Biology of infectious pathogens and also a lecturer at the Department of Biochemistry, Cell and Molecular Biology at the University of Ghana. And before we go, an update about Ghana's total confirmed cases. And Ghana currently has 566 new cases of COVID-19. You're still watching News 360 from the News app. We have